What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going back to the very basics of video editing. Whether you're just starting to get into video editing or you're migrating from a different software into Premiere Pro, this video is gonna give you a crash course on the very basics of it and how you can start making some epic videos in no time. So let's get started. All right, so you open up Premiere. This is a window you're gonna get. You wanna create a new project. Select where you wanna save it, rename it, and open up Premiere. We're gonna keep it where it is. Everything else default and hit okay. This is the first thing you're gonna see when you open up Premiere. Now it's arranged in these tabs, very intuitive. We're gonna start with assembly. This is the area where you wanna import your media. You can either right click and import or double click to import a video. So we're gonna import our first video clip. So we've imported our first clips right here. Uh, you can see the uh, time here for each clip. Uh, if you wanna change the frame rate, you simply right click, modify, interpret footage and change the frame rate here to whatever you want. This is at 50, so if you wanna change it to 25 to slow it down, you can do that. We're not gonna do that. Over here is our timeline with a sequence. We don't have a sequence just yet, but we can create one by right clicking the clip and hitting new sequence from clip. That'll create a sequence with the same settings as a clip. If you wanna create your own, you can simply right click new item and sequence. That way you enter or you pick a preset of whichever sequence that you wanna create. So you can select whatever clip you want, maybe hit shift to select multiple clips and you can add them to your timeline. This is a timeline right here. A few things before diving into the other parts. If we right click, we can create a new bin and this is like a folder. We can name it whatever we want. This is for organization purposes and we can drag in our clips into it just to make it more organized. We can change the view from here to list view and we can see everything over here, folders open close sequence. So let's dive into the editing tab right now. We have our sequence over here. You can see the layout changed, but pretty much everything else remains the same. So let's start with the very basics of cutting and trimming our clip. This right here is our videos. Top is going to be the video. The bottom is going to be audio labeled A for audio, V for video. If we want to hide anything, we simply click this I icon. If we want to mute anything, we click the M icon. We're gonna leave it as it is. And just like Photoshop, we have multiple layers where we can overlap the clips. You can use that if you wanna reduce the opacity of the upper one or overlap it for whatever reason you might need. We're gonna leave it as it is. If we wanna cut, we can simply hit this razor tool or press C on our keyboard, cut the area we wanna delete, and then hit the V on our keyboard or simply click here, selection tool, and we wanna delete this. Now it's gone, we wanna close this gap, click here and hit delete and that closes the gap. What if we want to delete only the audio part of the video? Well, you right click on the video, unlink, and now you have a separate audio and video track. So you could delete either one and leave the other just like that. If you wanna make changes to one part, but lock an entire layer, well, you could simply hit this lock icon and now the bottom audio layer is locked. So whatever we do to the top, cut or do whatever, the top layer is gonna be locked and not gonna be affected by it. You can do the same exact thing for the top layer as well. So let's move on to our effects control panel right here. We have multiple panels. We can go to the effect over here, no clip selected, so we'll select it. And over here, this is self, this is really intuitive position. Uh, you can move the clip right to left, left to right, up or down. Uh, if you wanna scale it up or down as well. Rotation, same thing and the opacity. If you want to lower the opacity of it, make it darker, or if you want to overlap it over another video, then you can do that as well. If you want to see more or less of your sequence, well, you simply come down here, click it, and then drag to the right or to the left to see more or less of the sequence. One of the cool things you can do is create an animation by using keyframes. And how you can do that is simply by clicking the toggle animation for whichever you want to change. For example, the scale, we're going to hit it and this creates a keyframe right here. We're gonna move our clip a few frames to wherever we want, and we're gonna zoom in. And what that's gonna do is gonna create a smooth transition from the first scale to the second. So let's see how that looks. So if we play it by hitting our play icon over here, you can see that it starts to smoothly zoom in from our first parameter that we set, which is a scale of 100, up to the second one, which is 180. You can change that depending on what you want. You could do the same thing with a position. You position the first keyframe uh, at whatever position you want. For example, 
we'll start it over here and then the second keyframe down here we're going to reset the parameters to the very beginning and let's take a look at how that looks so now it's zooming in and also changing the position simultaneously very smoothly the clip is shaky but you get the idea of how it works you can do the exact same for rotation uh, opacity and multiple other effects Let's take a look at our effects panel right here. There are multiple effects that you can add to the video. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I will show you a few just to get an idea of how they work. The first one we're going to look at is the Gaussian Blur. So you simply take it and either drag it over here to the effects panel or drag it over the clip. Both work the exact same and now we can see the Gaussian Blur effect. We can change the blurriness of it. And just like previously, we can also add a keyframe to create a smooth transition. So it starts very blurry and then we'll turn it back to zero by hitting the reset. And now it starts very blurry and it goes into focus. Very, very cool. Uh, you could change other parameters here as well. If you want to delete a keyframe, simply hit it and click the backspace key or delete and that will delete the keyframe. You can drag it to extend it and make it slower or move it closer to the first keyframe to make it faster. Now let's assume we want to add that same exact effect to our next clip. You simply click it or right click, copy the effect, hit, go on the next clip and paste it over here by either right clicking paste or command V or control V on a Windows or Mac. Alternatively, a cool method you can do is go back to the assembly, right click, create new item and let's create an adjustment layer. Leave everything to default and hit OK. Let's take this adjustment layer, which is labeled by pink, and drag it over our clips. So what we're going to do is we're going to place it over our clips. We're going to expand it to fill our whole timeline or the area where we want it to cover. And what you can do now is instead of applying that same one multiple times to each clip, what we can do is cut it and apply it to the adjustment layer. And now everything under this adjustment layer is going to be affected by that effect. So we have our blur now and if we pan through we will notice that every clip under it is blurred. So this is a great way to add uh, a, an effect to multiple clips at the same time without copying and pasting it individually. You can add multiple effects, color grades to the adjustment layer and much more. Think of it as a layer that's overlapping all of your clips or depending on where you drag it. So anything you add to it is going to affect everything under it. So let's assume this clip is too long and we want to make it shorter by speeding it up. Well, how do you do that? Right click the clip and go to speed duration. So now you can speed up the clip either by percentage of how much faster you want it. So we want it to be twice as fast. We'll set it up to 200% and now we have exactly half of the clip. Alternatively, what you can do is let it play backward. You can do that by hitting reverse speed and hitting OK. Now it's going to play the video in reverse. Now we want to get rid of this gap, we're going to click here and hit delete. So let's unmute this track for a bit. So now we notice that the audio clip over here is too loud and we want to make it quieter. So what we can do is right click the clip, go to audio gain, and now we can adjust the decibels. We can either reduce it to make it quieter or increase it to make it louder. We're going to significantly reduce it just to make it quieter because we don't want it. Uh, and you can see right here the graph, it completely became blank because it became very, very quiet. So let's get rid of this blur so we can see our clip. If you notice that there is some lag or your computer can't handle the playback, well, you can adjust the uh, playback resolution over here, either to full, half resolution, or quarter. I usually set it at quarter. It works the best for me. So let's assume we added some effects to this and we want to play it back smoothly, but it's not playing back. Well, what you can do is right click, mark your endpoint and drag it to the beginning of the clip and we want to play back this area right here we're going to right click and mark the out point so this is our in to out point we can expand it or drag it back to wherever we want and what you can do is go to sequence render into out so this is going to pre-render this area right here so we can play it back smoothly now after it's done pre-rendering you realize the bar on top became green over this area that we pre-rendered now you should be able to play it very smoothly with no lag so now everything looks good. We like our video, but we want to add some text to it. So we're going to come down here, take our text tool or type tool and drag it over here to create a box. And we're going to type tutorial. So we like everything. We want to change the font. We'll come down to our effects control. Once again, change the font to whatever you want. You can scale it up or down and adjust multiple parameters like alignment, 
fill color, shadow stroke. We're going to leave everything as it is, but let's say we want to move it. So we're going to go back to our selection tool and simply click here and then drag it to whatever position we want. We like where it is, but now we notice that it's not filling our entire clip. Well, we'll come down to our timeline and we'll drag it to fill our entire clip from beginning to end. And now it's covering the entire clip. So we like our text, but we want to hide it for the time being. So we're going to toggle the eye icon and we want to adjust our color now. So we're going to select our adjustment layer, which I've already gone ahead and cut to fit only this clip right here. So it's only affecting under this clip. I'm going to select it, come to our Lumetri color, and I can change some parameters like exposure, contrast, and other ones. Go to creative, maybe add a LUT over here. Look up table. I have a detailed tutorial on this on my channel. I'm not really going to go into this in this video right here, but you can adjust the colors over here to the way that you like. Now that you made your color adjustments, you want to see the before and after. You come down here to the effects control and you'll see dualimetry color. We can simply toggle the before and after, before, after. So I like the before a lot more. So all I could do is simply reset the entire effect. Now it goes back to where it was at the beginning. So we like where this is going, but we want to create a nice transition between these two clips. What we can do is go to the effects, go to video transitions and drag, come down to dissolve. I'm going to add a cross dissolve between my two clips. I'm going to drag it in between the two. Hit OK. I'm going to zoom in. And now I can see a larger portion of it. You can see that we like how it's looking. But it's a little too short. We want to make it longer. So we come down here and we'll see when we hover over, we get this icon. We'll simply drag it from here. We want to extend this part as well. Drag it from here. And now we've created a much longer transition or slower. So that looks pretty cool. But now we want to add an audio transition as well because we have a high volume clip right here to the one that we lowered the volume earlier. Once again, we'll go back to our effects panel audio transitions and we'll go to exponential fade. We'll add it to the end of this clip and same thing. We can drag it to make it a lot longer and this creates a smooth audio fade from the higher volume clip to the lower volume clip. So now that we like everything, we've created transitions, adjustment layers. Uh, we've added some text. Everything's nice, but we want to merge these two clips together. Well, you can simply drag the whole thing together and right click and hit nest sequence. What this is going to do is simply create, you can name the sequence to whatever you want and hit OK. What this is going to create is a sequence or like a clip that contains all of those other clips. So if you go ahead and double click it, it'll open a new window over here and you'll see their contents of what you nested. If we want to go back to our original sequence, simply come up back here and you'll see the nest sequence. So whatever adjustments now that you make over here, they will automatically be applied or it will take effect in your main sequence. This is a great way to organize your timeline. Also, sometimes you might have to do it because you cannot apply, for example, a speed. Uh, you cannot speed up your clip or slow it down and apply a warp stabilizer to the same clip without nesting it first. So you apply warp stabilizer, nest it, and then slow or speed up your clip. So we've nested our sequence and we don't like this part right here. So I'm going to click C, cut it and delete and I'll keep it actually but we don't want to render it out in our final video. So what we do is come up over here to our out point, drag it so that we're selecting only the area we want in our video. So this is the only area we want to render out in our final video. So we're going to go up to file. We want to export our video, go to media. So this is our final video. If we skim through, we're going to notice there's still area over here, but we set our out point to this point right here. Now we're going to render only the area in blue. Everything outside the blue is not going to be rendered. For export settings, I like to keep it to match source high bitrate. You can switch it to various presets like YouTube 4K, 1080p. I'm going to keep it at match source and this is a format I like to pick. For output name, you can change it. Uh, simply hit click on it, change whatever name you want along with whatever location you want to save it as. For video settings, you can go much more advanced and change the aspect ratio, uh, frame rate, resolution, and a lot of other parameters as well. Audio, same thing. You can tick maximum render quality. It gives better quality, but increases the encode time. Use previews. If you've done any pre-rendering in the sequence, well, it can use it for the export to make it much faster. If you want your video to start 
at zero, you can take start time code at zero, or you can custom select where you want it to start. And this gives you an estimate of the file size uh, based on the settings you have selected up here. Once you're happy with everything, simply hit export and your video will render to the output location that you have set. And that is pretty much it. So that is pretty much everything you need to know or most of the things that you need to know to start creating videos in Premiere Pro. I tried to make it as short as possible with the most amount of value. So I hope you found it helpful. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. And if you want to catch future uploads, subscribe. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys next time.